I'm in prison. Well, a former prison actually, in Coalinga, California, where I've come to talk to the folks from Ocean Grown Extracts about their evidence brand, which is designed to draw attention and raise funds for the last prisoner project to get people incarcerated for cannabis crimes out of jail. And they do all their manufacturing and growing on the grounds of this former prison. They grow weed in the prison to help get people out of prison. That's their slogan, and we're gonna find out how it works. I'm Adam Shorn, and this is The Green Room, the Los Angeles Times video series focusing on cannabis, commerce, and culture in California. Kalinga was $3.7 million in debt at the time. Mm -hmm. And so we scheduled a meeting with the city manager and um, the mayor at the time, and just said, this is who we are. We're a family business. This is what our intentions are. This is what we'd like to do. And, um, and they seemed open to it. And they said, and I asked, like, do you happen to have any properties? They said, we happen to have a place with great security. <laughs> we tried to take the existing space and utilize that to, like for instance, our distribution center, that intake center had these individual cells. So now those cells, instead of having those people waiting to be processed, there, there's our different packaging you know, of the different brands. Weed keeping them to be processed, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, actually packaged and ready to go out the door. Okay. So the door that used to bring them in is the one that we now use to have our product exit okay. through. Was this part of the prison grounds? This is where the prisoners came to, they had their own garden. There used to be a greenhouse right out here. There was like a basketball courts and a little workout facility, you know, like bench press. Now what used to be that is filled with how many acres? Of? Seven acres of canopy. Canopy means like sort of the green, space, right? Is that yeah, it's a 15 acre parcel, but because of the rows and the driveway and everything, we've got seven acres of actual plant. What's the yield out of this out of this space that that um, ocean grown extracts has planted? It varies uh, annually, probably 30 to 50,000 pounds. This is a solitary confinement wing. Now it's repurposed for you see the conveyor belt here uh, uh, Which is we use for trimming. Trimming, now. trimming yeah. weed. So quite a difference from where people used to lay their head and serve time for, you know, cannabis. And, and now here just right exactly where they were. Right. How many prisoners did this did this hole did they have? I believe it was around six hundred was the typical okay. um, amount. And so they have the the buildings like a butterfly. There's there's three buildings that are about 26,000 square feet. Okay, and so each. Fr from so here, we're in the middle. Okay. And then you have a prison yard and another building, a prison yard and another building. And so we took this first building and made this our manufacturing. Okay. So this is where we made our C1D1 room, where we do all of our own extraction. I can show you that room. But now a C1D1 room for people who don't know what that is is an explosion proof room. Okay. So this is the room where when we take the plant and we have the, um, and we're gonna do the extraction we, to pull the oil out, out of, of the, the plant. Mass, yeah. Yep, out of the biomass, it goes into this room and we're able to use um, the different the different gases to extract that oil. Okay, and, and what did the C1D1 extraction room, what was that before? I believe it was the warden's office. Okay. Um, when we came in, there were desks that were set up in there but because there was a second room so close, you typically have to have anything that could possibly explode um, needs to be in a separate room. So the reason why this was great was we had two, we had the small room where we could put all the equipment and then we could pipe it through to this so existing okay. room. Ocean Grown Extracts is our umbrella company that sits above Evidence. But Evidence was born, my sister saw an Evidence bag and that's what launched you know, the idea and just thought like, wow, how crazy would it be to package weed in an evidence bag from the prison? Right around that same time was when uh, Dan had mentioned that Steve D'Angelo wanted to go to dinner and talk about this idea that he had for Last Prisoner Project. And we went to dinner, he shared the idea. I had no idea that all these people, in my eyes, it was like, well, it's legal. So oh, you had no idea about the number of people no, still incarcerated? No, no idea. Yeah. No idea, yeah. and I was blown away, and Dan was as well, and we both just left there and called our brother Kelly and said, we have to do something, you know? Like, so we helped give them their um, seed money to start, uh -huh. and just said- At the very beginning of the last yeah, project. Yeah, okay. at the inception. Yeah. So, so we just said, we're in. From the, this brand, the evidence brand, a dollar from the sale of every 
the bag. dollar from every from every half ounce from goes half to, ounce. and that's that's a dollar net. So even even if our costs, like at times we've been a lot of the time, most of the time, upside down, that dollar goes out regardless. That's our commitment. Since launching, the Evidence brand has donated tens of thousands of dollars to The Last Prisoner Project, whose efforts have resulted in the release of 75 inmates to date, as well as raise awareness about the number of people still incarcerated across the U.S. for nonviolent cannabis crimes. Just as importantly, the LPP is working to improve the quality of life for those who are still behind bars for weed crimes. Got out in 2019 from serving a 10-year sentence. I did nine of those years. Um, for a cannabis conspiracy in New York, I was found guilty of conspiracy to distribute a thousand or more kilos of cannabis in New York. I actually met the founders. They said, hey, you know, we have some opportunities for you to share your story. Would you kind of get your story out? And I did that for about a year. And in that year of sharing my story and opening up more to people, I started working full time for them. Once Last Prisoner Project was born, it all just, it didn't feel like work anymore. Just the idea of the, that there are 40,000 cannabis prisoners in the U.S. right now, as we're doing this, yeah. right? And, and many other companies that are, that are, you know, building generational wealth potentially. Um, there are still people that are sitting in an eight by 10 cell, you know, that would love to come home to their father, their sister, their cousin, whatever, and they're missing out. And they're hearing yeah. while sitting in the cell, they're hearing about this new industry that's flourishing. I mean, how, how frustrating would that be? I don't think there's any, and I'm three years um, out, of, out of physical custody. I'm still on supervised release. I don't lose the, what it's like to wake up in a room full of women, what it's like to sit in a room and watch this booming industry. Blonde hair, blue eyed lady on TV talking about, oh, and the packaging and this and that. And I'm sitting there in, you know, yeah. my gray sweats going, wait, what? We can't sit here and complain about anything while someone's sitting in a cell, right? So right. like, that's what's invigorating. That's yeah. what gets you up every day. That's when you're yeah. seeing them come out and you're seeing that it's like, yeah. you're, it doesn't feel like yeah, work. Well, you, you, you also have that, which, which is very powerful motivator in and of itself, but you also have a family business and having come from a family business background that there's also that fire. Yeah, and we wanna make this our model. We wanna make this our model that you repurpose, you take this dark place and you bring jobs back and you grow weed and we can do well by doing good.